Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 9th, 2019 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. This weekend, credentials for a GitHub account associated with Canonical were apparently compromised, and uh, this account was then used to add a number of repository, as well as adding a few issues uh, to Canonical projects. This is important because Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu, one of the more commonly used Linux distributions. Now the entire impact isn't clear yet and as a canonical employee stated, an investigation is still underway. Doesn't appear like anything too critical got modified. Launchpad, which is sort of the distribution system that canonical uses for Ubuntu was not affected by this compromise of the GitHub account. So right now, it doesn't look like you have to do anything if you're using Ubuntu. Maybe if you're using GitHub, uh, make sure that you're enabling two-factor authentication and that you are regularly reviewing any accounts associated with your projects. And I'm looking forward to find out what exactly happened here in Canonical's case and how they detected the compromise and how they actually then responded in terms of figuring out what this rogue user may have possibly done to their software. And mage card attacks are in the news again. This time, Sanquin Security Labs, a company that specializes in responding to these type of attacks, detected 962 breached web stores on July 4th last week. This, they say, is part of a larger automated campaign. They're scanning for known vulnerable web stores and then are using exploits in order to install the MageCard JavaScript. MageCard again is a keystroke logger, so it's typically injected into payment pages where user would enter payment card details. Uh, now, in similar news, actually, just today it was announced that British Airways, that was also the victim of a mage card attack, may be subject to a 200 million euro fine because of GDPR and data, of course, that was leaked as part of this attack. Now, while MageCard has been going around for a while and has been using sort of a very similar technique and code, there are actually a number of distinct groups that are falling sort of under the MageCard umbrella. So it's not always the same group conducting these attacks. And about a month ago, Facebook announced that it'll go into the cryptocurrency business and will be issuing sometime next year a cryptocurrency called Libra associated with a wallet published by Facebook called Calibra. Well, as a result, of course, fraudsters have started jumping on that bandwagon as well. And security company Digital Shadows now took a look at what these fraudsters are up to. First of all, Digital Shadows did detect a substantial increase in domain name registrations using the trademarks Libra and Calibra. And some of these websites have already gone live with various scams. If you're going to the legitimate Calibra.com website. It doesn't really have much. It essentially just allows you to sign up for notifications for the time when the currency is actually going to be launched. While the fraudsters more or less copied the design of this website, but actually already offer to sell you Libra crypto coins. In addition to these pretty obvious scams, uh, there are also companies that are offering Debian-based uh, virtual private servers for sale that apparently have access to the Libra blockchain and even allow you to mint coins. Uh, but of course, that doesn't really work for a cryptocurrency that's not actually active yet. So as usual, if we do have a major news event, we do have fraudsters jumping on the bandwagon here, trying to profit from uh, these events. 
If you are interested in this particular cryptocurrency, then please make sure that you are visiting the authentic site. Most of the domains that the Digital Shadows investigated haven't had any real content on it yet, so they may be launched later. Also, a lot of sort of lookalike domains that were launched in order to impersonate eventually the real domain that Facebook uses for this project. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.